I have a single stack nine millimeter here and I have their double stack nine millimeter here. And then I have the Frankenstein build 2011 that I built with Rock Island Armory parts here. And I wanted to just kind of go through these guns and compare and contrast them and talk about the reliability, the shootability, and which one I like best if I could only have one of these. So when I first started YouTube in 2016, me and my buddy went to a gun store one day and I saw this and the gun store guy brought it out and let me hold it. And at the time I couldn't afford it. And this gun was a lot cheaper in 2016 than it is today. I believe these were about 750 ish dollars back in 2016. And today I think they're around 800 ish, um, just kind of depending on where you get them and if there's a sale or not. I didn't have any money to buy it. I just started the channel and I promised my wife that I wouldn't spend money out of our bank account for the channel. I was only allowed to spend money that the channel made. So I couldn't buy it, but I remember promising myself one day I'm gonna buy that gun. And you know, fast forward a couple of years after that, I started looking for the gun when I could finally afford it and couldn't find it. And then I would just kind of, you know, give up on it, forget about it, move on to other things. And then back in December, 2019, I started looking for this gun again. Still couldn't find it. I got really frustrated. And then I started building this guy, which is essentially the same thing, but a lot different. I know, doesn't make sense, right? This is a 2011 that I built using an STI uh, grip, CK Arms, 2011 frame and Rock Island Armory parts that I bought off of eBay. And this series has been a very popular series on the channel. If you want to watch that after this video, I'll link it down in the description below. And a month or so after I made this video series, someone told me that they found this in stock and I went to the link and it was already sold out. Finally, a couple of months ago, a friend of mine said, hey, I can get one of those for you if you'd like one. And I said, yes, please. And I, and I did pay for this. No one gave it to me. However, they did give me a little bit of a discount and I just wanted to say thank you for that. But regardless if I get a discount, regardless if someone gives me a gun for free to do videos or regardless if I pay full price, you know, I made a promise to you guys back in 2016 when I started this channel that I was just gonna be unfiltered. And that's how I roll. And that's how this channel rolls. I don't know, some of you out there may believe me, some of you may not believe me, but that's the truth of the matter. I don't see the point in making videos if I'm just gonna censor things about you know certain firearms. And I think that this gun right here is gonna be a good representation of what Rock Island Armory actually does well. Oh, just a heads up for those of you guys that are new to this channel, first link in the video description. That link will also be pinned in the comments. That'll link to my website where I have a blog article about the stuff we're talking about in today's video. So if you see anything you wanna pick up, check the price on. I'll try to find best to find things in stock just in case you're interested. So before we get too far into this, let's do a couple of little comparisons between the Rock Island Armory and then my custom build that I have right here. And we'll also throw in this guy for comparison's sake as well. This is also a Rock Island Armory a single stack 1911. So let's start with the Rock Island double stack and we'll get to the other two. There's nothing flashy about this gun, and I kind of like that. I like that it's got this very subdued tactical look. It's got the full Picatinny tack rail right here, which is very similar to this guy. Um, you got some front serrations, you got some rear serrations, you got some adjustable fiber optic sights. It didn't come with any extra fiber optic tubes or different colors, but that's all right. You do get an ambidextrous safety that can be actuated from either side of the gun. I do find though that just actuating it from the left side is much easier than this side. If you notice, watch. This side's got a little play in it. That can be upgraded. And you know, just kind of show you a comparison on this one. So you can see on this one, there's zero play. But like I said, I'm using upgraded parts on this. I actually never finished this. I do need to finish it. Um, you can still see all the scuff marks from where I was sanding it. I'm gonna finish off sanding this and get it all Cerakoted so we can finally do like an updated video on this. But I just kind of, kind of fell to the wayside, you know, due to other videos. I'm gonna take this light off. I was using the Surefire on here. There's our full tack rail. Standard trigger guard that you see on most 1911s. I did kind of get a little scratched up right there, but that's whatever. This grip is is a thick girl. Looks kind of funny when you look at it from this angle, right? Like it's like, wow, this is super thick and that's really skinny. Kind of reminds me of those uh, those reptile looking things on the Super Mario Brothers movie from the 90s. It's just like this big fat body and this tiny little head. And then here's the internals. Nothing really fancy and, and that's kind of what the appeal was for me. Now one thing I will say that Rock Island Armory does really well with their 1911s is they know how to make them actually quite smooth. This slide is very smooth. Um, it's still breaking in. I only have about 400 rounds through it. And, but then here's this one right here. And this one's also um, nine millimeter. 
And this one came with the 22 TCM barrel. We'll talk more about 22 TCM here in a minute because um, I have a few things to say about that, but it's basically the same thing except it has a single stack grip, but this slide is much smoother. And I will say the slide on this one has a flattened top, whereas the one on the double stack has a rounded top. And then this one also has a rounded top. So I, I, that is something to note. I, I do want to get some slide work on here, um, but finding people that can do slide work on the Rock Island Armories is kind of difficult. I do know of, of one company, which we'll mention here in a bit, but they're just so busy that they can't. Talking about this one, um, as I mentioned, I use Rock Island Armory parts. This is a Rock Island Armory slide and barrel. Um, I just kind of sanded it off until it was a completely chrome barrel. This is CK Arms frame. We're using the STI International uh, Grip. I forget the name of the trigger. It's a no name, I believe. And then I forget the hammer, sear, and safety that we used. I, I don't remember, but all the links are at the build list where this series is. I just don't remember the names of them. But comparing these two, off the cuff here, this one is much heavier, and this one is much lighter, I guess because we have a polymer grip. This one has this thick boy grip that can be a little bit difficult to hold if you don't have medium to large sized hands. So if you have small hands, this is probably not a gun for you, but this one is great for medium to small size hands. You can also get these STI grip modules in a bunch of different sizes if they're still available. I did put looser tolerances on mine, so listen. I like that because it makes it run a little bit more reliable for 1911s. And then also I wanted to add that because I'm going to get this frame and probably the slide re coated into different colors. And I wanted looser tolerances so that when you do Cerakote them and stuff, if they were too tight right now, it would be way too tight once I get it all coated. Let's do a quick little trigger pull test. Now, I will say of the different 1911s that I've tried from Rock Island, um, this one seems to be kind of the worst. It's not a bad trigger, it's just in comparison. So let me show you. So here's the take up, break, reset, break, Okay, let's do a, compare that to this one. This one just has a little bit of a stutter, but I think I can polish that out. It's not a huge deal. And then here's the one on my custom build. This one has the cleanest feel, um, more like it's breaking glass. This one has the second cleanest feel, and then this one's the third. But again, none of them are bad. Let's do a trigger pull test real quick. So this one is pulling. Okay, that one pulled just a hair over four pounds. It feels lighter in all honesty, but we'll try that again. There we go, right at four pounds again. Now let's see how this one pulls. Ooh, that one pulled all the way at five and a half pounds. Again, it doesn't feel like it, but that's what it's reading at. Yep, 5.25 pounds. All right, let's try mine. So mine pulled at about four and a quarter pounds as well. Now, what I found fascinating about this was when I first saw this in the stores a couple of years ago, they also came with the 22 TCM barrel and the recoil spring so you could shoot 22 TCM. This one, however, didn't come with it. I'm guessing it's a different part number, I'm not sure. But this one did, and I have shot a lot of 22 TCM out of here, and I have a lot to say about 22 TCM. Now, one thing that has been a gripe for me with Rock Island Armory, especially with their 1911s, is they only come with one magazine. Like this one came with this 110 rounder. And this one came, I believe this is a 17 round magazine. If I'm wrong, I will notate that on the screen. Uh, but it did come with just one. Now, this one, it's not the biggest deal. I mean, their mags are not cheap by any stretch of the mag imagination. You know, like the gun was really affordable, but their mags, I believe these are like 50, 60, $75 for these little guys. With these double stack mags, they are impossible to find straight up. Now, I know for a fact that I could probably text somebody 
or call somebody that has connections and get one. But I didn't want to do that. What I wanted to do was to see if I could actually find them in the real world. And I have not been able to find a single magazine for this gun. Um, otherwise, I would have bought it. And I'm just really, you know, kind of bummed out about that. I know they're Metgar magazines, but it's a very specific one. And that kind of sucks. Whereas with the build right here, this one uses STI magazines. This one's a 17 rounder. I also have some 20 rounders that fit. And these mags can be found basically anywhere. And, you know, and I really wish that these mags were interchangeable, but they're just not. Like you can get it in there, but it won't lock open or anything like that. It's just, I mean, they're designed differently. If you know anywhere where I can find mags or learn how to convert this to accept STI mags, let me know in the comments section because I'd love to hear that feedback. So that's all fine and dandy, but what does it actually feel like to shoot? So the first time I picked up this gun, it was a little bit awkward at first, just kind of getting used to this grip. On the front strap here, there's not much for checkering, but thankfully this magwell really helps your hand to stay in place so that you can mitigate recoil a lot better. Although they didn't put any, you know, correct checkering, I don't think, on the front, I don't notice it when I'm actually shooting the gun, which is a good thing. The first time I took it to the range, um, I think I shot like a couple of rounds like this, and then I did a YouTube short where I was holding my phone shooting this, and usually when I do the YouTube shorts, I'm, I'm shooting one-handed. I did have one malfunction from shooting it one-handed. I could have limp-wristed it a little bit because I was shooting one-handed, but aside from that one malfunction that I had, I've had zero malfunctions, zero jams in the 150-ish rounds that I put through here. And that's really saying something for a 1911, right? Like I didn't clean it. I just put oil on it and then I just took it out to the range and started shooting it with a bunch of different types of ammunition. Um, anything from 115 grain to 124 grain, aluminum case, steel cased, or brass case, they all ran through it with no issues. The accuracy is just as accurate as I can be. I didn't notice any flaws with the accuracy. I mean, basically wherever I placed the sights, as long as I pulled the shot correctly, it hit exactly where I was aiming. I didn't have to adjust the sights or anything. So now let's talk about the 22 TCM thing that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So if you're unaware of what 22 TCM is, it's essentially a nine millimeter casing that's necked down to accept a 39 or 40 um, grain 22 caliber projectile. I would show you right now, but we're getting ready to move and I have everything kind of packed up except for the things that I need to film right now. This guy came with a 22 TCM conversion barrel. I made a video last year, not only about this, but about the conversion barrel for Glock that's also 22 TCM. Because back in 2020, when the prices of nine millimeter peaked at like 60 to 70 cents a round, you were able to get 22 TCM for like 39 cents a round. And today those prices are still kind of the same. They're about 39 to 40 cents a round, but nine millimeter has also come back down. I've also found nine millimeter recently with like some good CCI blazer for around 38 cents a round. No, it's not as good as the prices that we used to have in 2019, but it's definitely some of the best prices that we've seen in a while. So I started shooting 22 TCM out of this guy first and the Glock second. And when I started shooting it out of this, I, I really like the way that it feels when you shoot it because it, there's not a lot of recoil to it and it makes this crazy awesome fireball that comes out the muzzle of your barrel. It seemed to shoot really well, but then all of a sudden I started having issues with extraction. <laughs> First malfunction, failure to extract. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to work on this one. Can't get the slide to open now. All right, same issue again. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's a failure to extract. I might have to tweak this extractor a little bit, which is weird because the first mag was fine. Let's try it again. Range. Yep, same thing. So I came home and I adjusted my extractor and then it started extracting nicely. Then I started getting these weird like stuck casings where I would shoot a few rounds and the casing would get stuck in the barrel. And the same thing happened to my Glock 19.
Uh oh, a little malfunction. Okay, now this is where you need to place the tube. Uh... Oh yeah, we're having that same problem that we had before, where the casing is stuck. And with that one, you don't use just standard 22 TCM. You use 22 TCM 9R. I don't really know why they, you need a 9R for the Glock platform, but it's only one grain lighter. And apparently it cycles better. Basically, I kept getting stuck casings. And, and this, is hap this happened to me on multiple occasions um, where I was shooting 22 TCM. I got a stuck casing in this guy once and I had to get it out with a rod and then I got it stuck twice on the Glock. In fact, the casing's still in the barrel. I left it in there so I could show you on video, but like I said, we're moving and I accidentally packed it up. I don't know what, what's causing that. And if any of you guys know, let me know down in the comments because I would love to know how to prevent that from happening in the future because with the Glock, everything was running great. It's just every now and again, I get a stuck casing. With comparing the way it feels to shoot this one to my custom gun, I've noticed quite a few differences. With this one, because I have a stippled polymer grip that's slightly smaller, I can hang on to this thing so much harder. And I also have the double undercut on this frame as well. And although that this gun is lighter, Theoretically, you should get more recoil when you're shooting it, but because you can really grip it and hang on to it a lot better, I feel the recoil impulse is basically the same, if not a little bit better with this guy. I feel like I'm more accurate with this one than I am with this one. It could be because I have more rounds through this one, or it could be because the trigger is a lot nicer on this one. I haven't quite figured it out. I do know that it's not because of mechanical accuracy. Mechanical accuracy is the accuracy of the gun without human error. I do believe the differences in accuracy between these two are due to me and not the guns themselves. So the pros and the cons of the double stack tack ultra. Let's go over the cons first and we'll go over the pros. The con number one obviously is mags. Like I said, I haven't been able to find any spare mags anywhere. And I'm talking anywhere guys. I'm talking gun broker, eBay, nobody has them. And if they do, they're probably sold out by the time I even made this video. <laughs> the other con is this a little bit sharp edge on the back of this. This third con is I wish there was more options for grip panels, but that's not Rock Island's fault. That's just, you know, the aftermarket's fault. And I guess a con could be how thick this grip is, I guess, depending on your hand size. For me, it's not the biggest con, but I know some people think it is a con. The last con is they're really hard to find in stock chambered in nine millimeter. Now, don't get me wrong, you can get 10 millimeter and 40. I found those no problems. Just saying they're harder to find. Let's talk about the pros. So pro number one is this is probably going to be the cheapest way that you can get a double stack 1911 slash 2011 um, without having to build one yourself. And that's saying something, and that's probably part of the reason why they're always sold out. And so, you know, there's something to be said about that when someone manufactures a sub $1,000 double stack 1911. The second pro is how heavy it is. I like the weight of this. You know, heavy guns have a way of masking all of your flaws. Like if you have shaky hands and stuff, you know, a light gun is gonna make those shakes look more pronounced, whereas a heavy gun's gonna act like a buffer. And so that helps mitigate recoil, helps you be more accurate as a shooter. And this gun is super easy to shoot fast and accurately. The next pro is the trigger's not bad, although it could use some work. The trigger's actually not bad. I love the fact that they put front serrations on here so you can press check it no problems and honestly like this has just been a great gun there's nothing like crazy special about it but it is a fun and awesome gun to have and shoot now with this guy let's talk about the pros and cons of this con number one you got to build it there's nobody putting these together and that does take a set of skills um, I do have tutorial videos on all of this. Um, they're not on YouTube, they're on my website. But if you go to my YouTube playlist, link in the description for that, there will be links in those descriptions to every single tutorial that I made. That could be a con if you're not mechanically inclined. It's not something you can just buy and shoot. I did use a 100% frame to make it easier on the audience instead of using an 80% frame, but still, it makes it a little bit harder. The second con is even if you are mechanically inclined to build one, it's gonna be really hard to source the parts. We built this in January, 2020. Obviously since then, everything's harder to find. So if you can find the parts, good on you, but that's gonna be another con at this point in time. I think that's all the cons I have for this. The pros of this are, 
if you're gonna go with a modular style grip, you can choose any different size grip and you can choose different textures so that you can really get one that's tailored for you. And the fact that it's made of polymer means you can have it custom stippled if you bought like an OEM grip and you can also get it double undercutted if you need to or you can buy them this way. The second pro to building over buying a gun is you can just put the parts you want in it to begin with. You know, whereas with this one, right? By the time that I customize this to say, be what I want, like changing out the trigger, you know, maybe getting some slide work or whatever, it's gonna cost more than this gun. And so there's something to be said for building. You just get the parts you want the first time and then you don't have to waste money on parts you don't. It is insanely accurate in my hands, meaning that I can just hit everything that I aim for. I can really hang on to it and I love this one to death. But if I had to do it all over again, which one would I go with? I would go with this one. I'm just a big fan of tinkering. I'm a big fan of doing things myself. And there's some, there's a sense of accomplishment that you get when you build a gun. You just don't get when you buy a gun, even if you modify it. Just building something from nothing is a lot of fun. I mean, don't get me wrong, I didn't manufacture any of the parts, but there's just something about putting parts together and making them work together because with a 1911 slash 2011, it's not like a Glock. You don't just put pieces together and it works. You gotta do a lot of fitting and a lot of filing to make things work. But if I wasn't mechanically inclined and I wasn't a fan of building, I wouldn't regret this purchase at all. I'm actually very satisfied with it despite the tiny little flaws that it has. I think this would be like the perfect starter 2011. I mean, it's not technically a 2011 because the grip's not removable, but this would be like a good starter gun that you can get without breaking the bank like crazy like you can on some 2011s. Now with this one, I've had zero mount functions with it since the day I got it. I've shot all kinds of different types of ammo through it. Now with nine millimeter, it's never jammed or anything. Now 22 TCM, like I mentioned earlier, that's a different story. You know, like I said, last week I made the video on the STK 100. I thought that gun sucked, but I will say Rock Island Armory does make some really decent 1911s, especially for the price that you pay for them. If you've tried these in the past, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Hit the like button if you liked this video. Hit the dislike button twice if you didn't. Subscribe if you're not already, but until next time, I love you. You guys stay sexy.